grab it here. So I thought we'd dig into um, C, C++ assembler development on Windows and specifically using um, Microsoft Visual Studio Code. So let's get into it. So anyway, if there's any links to things that need to be downloaded and stuff, I'll put them in the comments. But anyway, here's the home page for um, Visual Studio Code and um, as you might recognize, it's the Visual Studio logo, and that leads to the fact that this is actually a free product um, developed um, by Microsoft and then expanded by others. And the key here is this is a simplified um, Visual Studio um, with the options to be able to um, plug in e extensions. So you c it can support a much wider range of um, development languages and you know, data file handling and, and um, sort of um, ah, a, a lot, lo a lot, potentially a lot more than what Visual Studio can do. And then also the, that it's, um, as I said, simplified and cut down. So uh, <coughs> to a certain extent, it's simpler to use than full-blown Visual Studio instance. Um, so more targeted towards makers and hobbyists that need to... Um, but this is actually, I've found this actually personally also very useful for more um, um, serious work. When, when you need a more lightweight environment to deal with editing or you know, just viewing, viewing source code and, and dealing with different types of source code management issues. It's actually easier to do running on under Visual Studio Code. But anyway, let's see what um, we need to do to get this to work for Amiga. So anyway, the first thing to do is to um, download it. Um, I am you. As I said, really, the objective was to <coughs> show this on Windows, and um, but basically the uh, Visual Studio Code is available for Mac and Linux. But then. <coughs> to what extent the extensions will work on on those different platforms is probably something that one needs to probably test on an individual basis. But on basically the default platform is Windows. So anyway, I've um, started um, Microsoft Code, and I've actually in in this demonstration I, re I removed all extensions just to make it um, a little bit more easier to show um, what's going on and. Um, the the issue with extensions, and I want to give a few insights just to um, those bullet points here before we start this. That um, the Visual Studio extensions can actually uh, attach to the same file types, and functionality can collide. So that's a warning. So if you um, I don't know put five different colorization extensions for your code, uh, for the same file type, then you will <laughs> get some very interesting side effects. Um, so my recommendation is to disable extensions not in use, like globally if they're not in use, just disable them or, or uninstall them. And then um, there, Microsoft is trying to work on an idea where if you have, based on what type of um, workspace you have active then you have certain extensions active but it's still a bit work in progress but, but, but be warned don't don't run too many extent don't have too many active extensions and, and if very strange stuff starts visually or otherwise happening then it can be related to the fact that you're having um, extensions are functionally colliding and trying to do approximately the same thing on top of each other but in this case, when, when, if you do like what I've done, is you disable temporarily or uninstall all the extensions and just install these extensions that are um, gonna, I'm going to demonstrate here, and also have I'll add them in the comments so, you, so you, that they're available there. Then um, you shouldn't run into any collision problems. So anyway, the first one we're going to get is this one: Amiga C C++ compiler. This one, and um, yeah, that's it. That's 
very fast to install. So it's like, where's the progress bar? No, there isn't any. It's, it's just there. So, um, so if we um, clear the search um, filtering, then we can actually see the different categories here. And then you could actually see that now we have the one extension. And so now, if you also want to read about how to use it and stuff, there it actually does have for the for the demonstration I'm getting here. It actually it it, it has a written um, instruction for it. Um, so basically, what I've, ta I've I've taken it a bit tailored the the example so to be a bit shorter and more concise. Anyway, so we start with that one and. Um, Or actually, we can. It's a recommended that we install also this one. And that's that one. And then just take install. And then again, you remove the filtering to get back to the default display. And as you see, like I was saying, that uh, one extension can bring in other extensions. So as you see that. When we installed the only this Amiga part, then you only got that one. But when you install the other package, then it pulls in a, a grouping of um, extensions. So it's kind of automatically managing the dependencies, uh, what you need. And um, then there, basically, I um, I, I have the emulator package Amiga Forever. Um, when you when you got this here extension, the Amiga emulator does not come with a ROM because the ROM is copyrighted. So, so basically, what I have is I have a copyrighted. Um, I have access to the copyrighted ROMs. And then you go to extension settings, and then you scroll down, and as you see here, it's actually there from a previous installation. But, um, if you are also running Amiga Forever then you'll find it in um, this sort of um, same directory. It, so it's non-user specific. And then there's a whole bunch of other ROMs. There's lots of ROMs for it. So you could actually set up for the 2000, 1200, 600, yeah, whatever. But I've, I've only set this one up here. So these th these paths that are here are kind of like default paths, but then it means that you you yourself have to get the ROMs from somewhere, put them in the correct place. So so anyway, the first thing you do is to create a target folder. You can call it whatever you want and put it wherever wherever you like. It's just important to remember where it is because once you, when you create the folder now, you, you can open it in. Um, in Visual Studio Code. So now I'll open the project folder. And the next thing to do is to do is say that you want to actually create a default um, project in the directory. And um, uh, there you'll find it in the instructions also, but I'll also show it here. So, so to initialize an in initial um, project in the empty directory, then you press Ctrl Shift P, and then you select this option, Amiga Init Project. So, oh, and then bingo, you so you get a default project. And also, as you see now, it pops up in the um, uh, empty folder, so then you get the subdirectories and the files name. So, anyway, the way to get this started is just to press F5, and it builds the solution, puts the binary in the emulator, and um, starts it up. So, I'll just 
just to show it's quite easy to do modifications and just try them. So let's um, make that D bar rectangular thing just an overlay disappear. So now we've done the modification and we just hit F5. This is of course a demo, so it's, it's going to spend most of its time, you know, living in, a, in the main loop structure. But but just to demonstrate, uh, you, this environment also automatically sets up the debugging capabilities. So you don't have to do any extra uh, other than setting up the ROM. There's no there's no setup involved. So as you see, now it breaks into the code, and so it's basically it's doing this, you know, other activities. And then there are the typical functions for stepping through and all, you know, all that junk. But I won't go into uh, in this demonstration. And if you want to stop the program, then you just hit the stop button. So let me do that some more. Stop the execution. Now the building of the solution is based on a make file concept. So you have this this file here and this file basically controls the building of your solution and to a certain extent you can like add and remove files without actually uh, having to come in here and doing and doing anything but there there could be instances where you would like to um, create a uh, change some compiler options or add more diagnostics or add in files that are not uh, normally supported or even extra external tools so then you can come in and and um, edit this logic. <coughs> um, if it's just flags, then they're quite self-explanatory. I, I, for most people, I don't think it's going to be that difficult to understand um, how to modify the make file to uh, add or remove stuff. So, but anyway, that, that remember that the make file is the key, um, and there's there is actually separate uh, make documentation available so you, you specifically to this what, what is this <laughs> what is this format you know where, where is it so so don't, don't think that it's, there isn't any there's millions of lines of documentation on, online if you just google for it to to, um, to actually understand better how this works and expand it and modify it. and um then there's another uh thing I'd like to point to that um, basically the 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 Amiga program kind of sits on top of a, a little bit of a stub framework and and that what they've done is to enable that is that they've created this support directory and and in here you have this kind of like yeah stub code um, and some of it's in assembler so I'd just like to you know, we can have a look at this one it's an S file so that's assembler and which means that you can actually add your own assembler also. There's nothing so stopping you adding your own assembler files or assemble assembler. Uh, so here we see standard Motorola assembler. You know, it's a different. You know. So uh, this is why I was saying when uh, the, this environment, you know, how do you do uh, C C plus plus assembler development? So this is it. You know you. You just add the assembler code, and it gets compiled into the um, into the solution. So no big deal. And then the uh, <laughs> one of the one of the things that people have asked me is that um, if we can we look in here in the main C. You see, it starts with int main. So, and everyone's like, wow, that's obvious. I mean, yeah, sure, it starts with int main. What, what are you talking about? But the thing is, <laughs> this is this is actually not where Amiga starts. Like, an Amiga system doesn't start in, in main. <laughs> so then you have to actually go into the... Um, if you're interested in such things, of course, you can just ignore it and accept the fact that the program starts in main. But... Um, 
if you actually want to know where, where it starts in the Amiga world, then you can actually turn into this file. And as you see, that this is a stub definition for main. And then you see that main is called from this routine here. Oh, wait, went too far. So lots of like attribute blah 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 and then we scroll over and then you see that it's called underscore start so in the Amiga documentation you're, you you will find the comments related to um, start so you don't you don't get confused so in in this in this world um, the stub start is implemented and then it does some it does some preliminary um, setup of stuff and then it calls main. But as I said, you don't need to care about it. You can just ignore the support folder and go on with your life. But um, uh, sometimes it's sometimes to do certain things to achieve certain things, you actually need to know also the um, the details of how the the binary initializes itself, so that you don't d do double initialization when you're when you're coding. So, um, for those that think this example is a bit overpowering and a little bit overkill, and yeah, where, where's what and when, and I don't really want to be so complicated. So, what I did is I created a minimum viable Hello World application instead. So, let's have a look at that. So, here's my um, <laughs> minimum viable uh, application. Well, I mean, of course, you could probably make it small, but I, I just thought, from a more general user perspective, like the, the, this is basically a um, console hello, wor hello world uh, implementation, and um, as you see, it still needs this kind of fra support framework to actually get things done. So, uh, but as I said, you don't need to care about the support framework. Uh, that's just part of the package when it comes to. Default setup, so you, your programming will be on this level with where main is. But anyway, so let's see um, how this works. <laughs> so, really exciting! It says "Hello Console." <laughs> yeah, I didn't make it "Hello World." So "Hello Console" is more and more. Good. So this. Um, it compiles the binary and then it throws the binary in the emulator and then the emulator executes it um, in Amiga DOS and then the process will exit. So actually in, th in this case there's nothing to debug so the, the debugger won't be able to attach to this because the process is no longer running. So it um, you know, starts up, prints hello world and exits. So. But still it's a, it's a, if, you, if you then have like the full demo and then you have this. Then you then you have the kind of full. You have the minimum basic uh, viable application, and then you have a full demo. So then you can actually compare the two and maybe help you get started on on some project and understanding you know, how things work. So just like to advertise that I have made um, videos about. Um, uh, how to start up with pure um, Amiga assembler development, and then I created a, also a pure video where it's to get with, you know, starting up with a totally standalone um, uh, C development environment. And uh, and this is the now the last step where where you actually have um, the you know, the debugger comes into the picture. The more advanced uh, the editing editor capabilities, the access to source code management because you can connect this to like seamlessly to git and or it is connected seamlessly to git and, and so if you feel like more comfortable being uh, developing on a little bit higher level and not dealing with the nuts and bolts then then um, this is kind of a more recommended environment and probably more n natural to quite a few people at uh, so anyway you can pick and choose you want to go you know, low and raw, or work on a little bit higher level. So, and actually, if you watch the video series, then you will actually, uh, yeah, have all the options. So, I hope I've made a useful video for somebody.
wants to get started. And um, I'll see you in the next one.